welcome back to this week's Real Country File. Coming up this week, we catch up with Stephen's interview again with Ben Briggs, following on from last week. If you didn't see it, go and watch it, and also the Crone Forage Wagon. Also, Angela is checking out some of the financial issues affecting farmers. But I must just also thank the sponsors of this week, which is A-Plan Insurance. So they will do all your sort of agricultural insurance needs, and also they can lump all your tractors together to make the policies a lot easier to jump in and out of and understand. You can click the link below the video or scan the QR code that hopefully might be coming along here somewhere at the moment. But yeah, thanks again to A-Plan. Now, let's see how Stephen got on with Ben. Actually, no, before we go to Ben and Stephen, I just want to mention about AdBlue. So obviously, a lot of tractors now have AdBlue fitted. This actually doesn't. This one's um, too old or pre-Euro, whatever, for emissions. But AdBlue, when it's in a container, looks very much like water. This is an ad blue container, as you can see, you, it will blend in, you wouldn't know. And there was a tragic thing on Twitter the other day about a farm that the containers had got mixed up. They thought it had a bit of water in the bottom. They topped it up to get some water that froze into some cattle and it basically poisoned 16 cows. Absolute tragedy, but yeah, just be really careful that you, if you've got freezing pipes at this time of year and you're moving stuff around, just make sure the drums are clean and empty and try not to use stuff that's had AdBlue in it because it can be toxic to cattle. It's quite strange really because urea is what AdBlue is made of and it actually urea, they put it in animal feed up to 3% because it's good for them, but in high doses, it can obviously kill them. It, like they say, it's the, it's not the, uh, the poison that kills you, it's the dose. So yeah, just be very careful of that. Anyway, this week I was at a health and safety thing organised by the NFU in my local area and I caught up with Tilly Pass. Now, Tilly Pass is an initiative to make sure that agricultural trailers are safe on the road. And anyway, so it's a little bit of this from when I was there. But also, when they put things on Facebook, what I can't understand is the negativity that they get. So they're only trying to make the world a safer place for everyone. But some people sort of troll them basically on Facebook. And even when I mentioned them in the video the other day, people were saying, oh, what are you doing? Why are you talking about them? And you're just like, hold on a second, we've got to be responsible as an industry. But anyway, here's that from the NFU event. At the health and safety thing now, outside, it's freezing, got my hat on. With the Tilly Pass trailer stand, which is in conjunction with Cornflakes Agricultural, which are the John Deere dealerships. Anyway, they now are doing these. It's, it's basically, in summary, an MOT for your trailers, but it checks all these different things, which is very important because you don't want a wheel falling off your trailer or the brakes failing and killing someone. But the other thing that they've done is they've developed an app, which I'm gonna show you the QR code there now, because I've already got a picture of it. I was gonna show you on the trailer, but there's people stood in the way, everyone's scanning it. And it's a checklist of what to do to your trailers to make sure that they're roadworthy. But also it's got videos on there how to do it from most major trailer manufacturers and also links to the handbooks for the trailers as well. So have a go at downloading that app and see how you get on. If you want to ring up Cornthwaite or the other people that do the Tilly trailer passes and get all them things checked, do it. Or if not, do it yourself by using the app. Yeah, so Jane from Tilly Pass sadly lost her son in 2014 from a defective trailer braking system. So that's why she started up. The first year they started Tilly Pass, they wanted to get 100 trailers done and ended up doing 1,000 in six months. So really good initiative. Don't forget, scan that QR code. Next up on The Real Country File is part two of my interview with Ben Briggs, the Farmer's Guardian editor. Uh, in part one, we got loads of uh, great comments. Thank you very much. Uh, for that and then part uh, two we start with a bit of a recap uh, what Ben said about the difficulties facing farmers in different regions of the UK you know affordable food produced here in the UK surely has to be the priority of any government but uh, I think we, we're still yet to see that from uh, from politicians and and DEFRA in particular and it's it's even worse when you look at places like Wales which have got draconian um, you know, um, environmental legislation and other other bits and bats across the UK. Oh, we'd love to hear from you. If you're farming in Wales, uh, underneath that legislation, how is it affecting you? Mm -hmm. You know, is it, uh, as as Ben says, you know, very different than on, in, in England and in Scotland? And and, uh, and I'm guessing you're getting a lot of letters through about, about just how, how, how the changes are affecting farmers in Wales. Yeah, well, you have the nitrate. They want to put uh, the entirety of Wales into a nitrate vulnerable zone, which will... Um, you know, curtail how much muck they can put on the land. And it's just, you know, you, farmers, they're uh, are really struggling with the legislation. You've also got the huge issue of bovine TB, which is decimating parts of southwest England and into Wales as well. Now, we have the culls in the 
in England, they haven't got that. They've got a vaccination strategy in Wales, which um, which many will point to being really a failure, uh, if we're going to be honest about it. So you've got that. You've got those challenges there. And then you've got different dynamics up in Scotland again, you know, especially around the environmental side, greenwashing, you know, multinationals buying up huge swathes of Scotland uh, to carbon offset. I mean, morally and ethically, it's uh, it's wrong. And, and, you know, so every part of the UK has different different dynamics. But of course, you know, we know it's not all doom and gloom. Prices in, in many sectors are still good, uh, you know, and it is it, it is just a different dynamic wherever you look. I'm really glad you said it's not all doom and gloom. I was going to ask you for one one good news story that's out there in farming at the minute. Is the one sector that's that's booming and thriving that you, you see bouncing at the minute? I mean, I think the uh, when you look at some of the prices still being achieved in like the sheep sector and, and the prices haven't quite come back as much as people thought they were going to, you know, there's a bit of buoyancy there. You know, the dairy sector, I think, continues propped up by that, you know, that um, demand dynamic, ultimately, you know, the need for processors and retailers to have that milk. Um, you know, so there is positivity out there. And you know what, like, you know, there's so many good farmers. That's the thing, you know, people doing brilliant, brilliant things on farm, either through you know, they might be specialists in dairy, they might have diversified, they might have multiple income streams. There are brilliant farmers out there. We try and showcase that at Farmers Guardian uh, and, and you guys are doing it as well. And I think we do need to be bullish about it. We need to be positive because nobody is going to promote this industry for us. And that's the that's the main thing for me. And we try and fly the flag at FG. And in terms of um, FG this year, What's the one story that's... Yeah, have you got a whiteboard in the office? Is it electronic now? Is the one thing you're waiting to drop, is the one thing you think that will have a massive impact on farmers this year, or is it just generally across the board what you've already talked about? I, I, really, I really believe it will be the reduction in, in BPS payments this year. Uh, I think there's an argument. You, you saw it at Oxford where uh, the, the farming minister basically said that farmers, there's going to be a bit of an extension of the ELM scheme. Perhaps that'll amount to a £1,000 extra I really believe that the government has to be looking at direct payments, whether they're kept at 2022 levels. I know the unions are nervous about saying that, but perhaps that's where we need to be. For me, uh, you know, with my financial hat on, I think that will be the real uh, the real challenge. And ultimately, we'll see where, you know, uh, energy prices, fertiliser and other things go this year. Well, Ben, we'd love to catch up with you maybe a couple more times through the year and see if... Uh... See what the big stories are hitting the farmers going in. That's all right. No, anytime, Stephen. Really My appreciate pleasure, mate. your time. Thank you, mate. Cheers, pal. Thanks for that, Stephen. Now over to Angela, who's talking with Hannah about tax and financials to do with agriculture. A couple of weeks ago, when I interviewed dairy farmer David Williams, he mentioned that these days you need to be just as good in the farm office as you are a farmer in the farm yard. And I'm sure that that resonates with so many of you. So today I'm talking to Hannah Reid from the Rural Partnership about finance issues and just things that you need to be conscious of in relation to tax and accountancy. So, Hannah, we're on a farm, we're in a stable barn here. So, just give us an overview. What's your farming credentials then? So, my grandparents were poultry farmers and uh, my other side of the family have all been um, from a farming background, work on a farm, etc. So, yeah. And you're and in young farmers as well? Yeah, I'm in Stratton Young Farmers. So, yeah. Very good. Horses, yes, um, yeah. So, you, you totally appreciate how... Um, farming works and can see it from this sort of admin and finance point of view yeah no definitely i think it really helps to understand um what your farmers what your clients do at home and on the farm and yeah, know the difference between a pig and a sheep or yes. a bull and a cow and stuff like, simple things like that i think that actually make a huge difference when they just want someone that understands them on the other end of the phone when they're talking about things that they're not really that comfortable with sometimes. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's it. And I know I spoke to one accountant who was looking at some accounts on a farm and she said, oh, they, they, they've got hogs. That They must have be a pig farmer. And I'm like, oh, no, it's not, you know, hog is not necessarily a pig. I know that's a bit confusing, but yeah, there yeah. we go. I just focus on sheep. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, anyway, so but from a, a farming um, tax and, and sort of finance point of view, what is it currently that farmers need to be aware of, would you say? January at the minute is a big month. Um, tax returns need to be submitted and the tax bill paid by the 31st of January. 
So if you haven't sent your tax return back to your accountant, get it done quick. Mm. Um, that we all be getting a little bit stressed now, a bit busy with those ones that have been a bit last minute. So if you haven't sent your stuff in, make sure you do it by the end of this week. Um, and then uh, make sure your tax paid by midnight on the 31st of January. Otherwise there are penalties and yeah. nobody wants to be fined unnecessarily, presumably. No. So. And yeah, make sure you pay the right uh, amount of tax, otherwise you'll get interest on that. Um, so you'll be paying payments on accounts, so you'll have your balance in payment for the tax year, and then you'll also be making a payment on account for next year. One's the 31st of January, so it's added onto the tax bill, and then another one will be the 31st of July. And that goes towards your tax bill for January 2024. So after everybody's got their tax return in on time, is there another deadline of any other finance things that need to be really, that people need to be conscious of? Most farmers have, or generically, have the 31st of March year end or 5th of April, that kind of time. So from February, you'll hit the ground running with pre-year end planning, um, trying to estimate um, people's tax liability. And then if it's looking like a bit of a large profit than normal or whatever, we can do things to look at bringing that tax bill down if it's uh, making a pension contribution. So you can... Um, make a contribution per tax year of uh, £40,000 per person. And if you haven't done that already, you can go back three years. So you can up, up to put a contribution of 160000 in, which is all, will, will all be tax-free. So that's always a good one to do. One as well, if you're a limited company, um, the super deduction finishes on the 31st of March. And that's where, if you buy a brand new piece of plant and machinery, you can claim 130% uh, of the cost of the machinery, um, so that gives you a big tax saving. But you've got to do that by the 31st of March, which is different to your AIA that everyone can do, which is 100% um, the cost of the plant and machinery that will go against your tax. Uh, your trading profits to bring down your tax bill, and AI is up to a million pounds, so that's really high at the minute. It might come back down again, it fluctuates. It went from 200,000 to a million, and um, that's up till the end of March. When it's a bit last minute, but if you need some more plant machine and you want a new tractor or been looking at it and thinking about it, definitely have a look and uh, go and buy it now. And especially if you're limited to your company, super deductions are a great one to be making use of. Right, okay. There is some implications on it and stuff, so do check with, give your accountant a call, because um, depending on your year end, it's slightly different. So if you're a September year end, instead of it being 130%, it'll be 112, 115%. Right, okay. So, so, it so you heard it here first. If you want to buy a new tractor, <laughs> Hannah says, go, go and buy it. it. <laughs> go and do it now. So, yeah, that's it. Fat returns are changing as well from the 31st of, Jan uh, the 31st of January. So it's an hour point system on filing your VAT returns. So a lot of people might have gone, oh, HMRC owe me, so it's fine. That isn't going to be the case anymore. They are going to start giving you points for filing them late. If you are someone that leaves your VAT returns till a bit last minute, make sure you get on top of them because... We don't want any unnecessary fines mm. and penalties for you. So, but if you need help, there is definitely yeah, most accountants have bookkeepers, and we'll do your VAT returns in house, or they can advise you on people that we work with. It's nice to check in. Don't just think that they're someone that you speak to at the end of every year. Make sure mm. bring them up if you have a question or um, want to look it into doing something else. Just give them a ring, and it is good to keep in contact and build a relationship. So if we know what you're doing. You know what we're doing. Um, everyone just gets on. That's a lot it. easier and we know what's going on then and we can help support yeah. you. We can't support you if we're not quite sure what's going on. Yeah, so. that's it, because everybody's working towards the same goal, goal of just getting the, the admin, which is unavoidable, sorted. Everyone's as worst job. slick as possible. Yeah. So, yeah. Try okay. not to avoid it too much. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's it, absolutely. Right, that's been really interesting. Thanks ever so much for talking Thank to you. us. Thank okay. you. Now everyone knows I love a good tractor run and Hannah wanted to spread the word about a tractor run that she's got going on. Yeah, on the Sunday the 12th of February, Stretton Young Farmers will be celebrating their 80th anniversary with a tractor run going from the Antrobus Arms in Antrobus. And we are raising funds for the MSA Trust. Uh, the MSA Trust um, are trying to find a cure. MSA, which is a Neurological disease that affects the nerves and in your brain, um, so it affects your speech, um, your movement, your blood pressure, things like that. It, it raised vital funds uh, for the MSA Trust, which is a trust very close to our heart, um, to Stretton Young Farmers. So we hope to get as many people there as possible. 
if it's joint coming along with the tractor, if it's setting up, watching us off from the pub or along the route, um, everything's on Stratton YSC Facebook and Instagram. Message us, get involved, um, and it'd be great to raise some money and celebrate Stratton YSC becoming 80. So there you go. Don't forget, put it in your diary, 12th of February. Anyway, we're getting near the end for this week, but don't forget to check out A-Plan Insurance for your insurance needs. And thanks again to them for sponsoring this week's episode. If you want to be a sponsor, get in touch. If you've made it this far, click like on the videos. We want to really grow the channel and make it have a voice that people can watch from different areas outside of agriculture to know exactly what goes on on a farm. If you've got an opinion on something or you want to send a video on, also get in touch. Anyway. From me, Andrew and Stephen, thanks for watching this week and we'll see you next week.